What was the most popular food fad of the 1970s? Hmm. Stay tuned and find out. Ooh, I need cheese. Hey everyone, welcome to Yester Kitchen. I'm Jill and welcome to the 1970s, the land of fondue. If you're having fun, please subscribe, like the videos, comment and share with your friends. So fondue, why was it so popular in the 70s? Well, I'm gonna go a little further back in history and give you a little bit of information. So the first documented recipe was in 1599 and it was just to help people use up old cheese and old bread you know, before they couldn't eat it anymore. And melted cheese and bread, how can you go wrong? Now we're gonna get forward to 1964 in the World's Fair. Fondue was introduced in the Swiss Pavilion and it kind of took off, not huge, but people started going, hey, melted cheese and bread, how can that be bad? But then there was the Swiss Cheese Union. That was a group of cheesemakers in Switzerland that really wanted to promote fondue. So they launched an ad campaign, a huge ad campaign. Take a look at some of the magazine pictures. See, everyone is sitting around, loving the cheese fondue, having the best time dip dipping their bread into it. And it was just promoted as fun. And you know what? It really was. So it started catching on. And the 1970s were coming off of the 1960s. So a lot of that culture was still there, like the communal and the free love and just everybody enjoying each other. So what was cheese fondue? Well, it was communal, it was sharing, it was, you could sit on the floor and have dinner. It was social, it was do it yourself, and there were rules. But the rules were for fun. You never wanted to lose a piece of bread and the cheese because you would either have to pay for dinner, buy a round of drinks, kiss the person to your left, kiss the person to your right, or the table would decide what you had to do. So depending on what you wanted or not, you would or would not lose that piece of bread and the cheese. But we're gonna to get to a really easy Swiss cheese fondue recipe, and this is the classic 1970s. There are so many cheese fondue recipes now, but let's focus on the classic. So the classic Swiss cheese fondue can be made with three different versions of Swiss. There's regular Swiss cheese, there's Gruyere, and there's Emmental. All of them have varying degrees of hardness and nuttiness and depth of flavor. You're gonna need one pound of cheese for this recipe. I've chosen to use a half a pound of Swiss and a half a pound of Gruyere, but mix it up, use just one, taste the cheese first and see what you like. So we're gonna start with this big bowl and I'm gonna add half a pound of Swiss you want that nicely grated up and you do want it at a reasonable room temperature so it starts to melt pretty easy. And half a pound of Emmental. Get these out of the way. And we're just gonna mix those up a little bit. Now you're gonna add two tablespoons of cornstarch. And you just wanna toss that around. Make sure it all goes in there. This is your thickening agent. And you just wanna toss it around, which is kind of fun. And you just want to make sure that all of your little cheese shreds are totally coated with the cornstarch. And that way you won't get like blobs of cornstarch because no one wants a blobby fondue. And now we're going to get this out of the way. And we're going to bring this classic, gorgeous, you know what this is. And if you have one, you know, it might be up in your attic, it might be up in your parents' attic, but in the 70s, everybody owned one of these. Today, it's making a comeback, so you can get a fondue pot. You can buy an electric fondue pot. If you don't have either, it will work fine in a regular saucepan on the stove, like medium low heat. You'll be fine, trust me. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a clove of garlic and we're gonna cut it in half. And you're just gonna wanna rub your fondue pot all the way around with this garlic. You don't wanna leave it in. You just want like a very mild flavor. And when you cook your fondue, it'll pick up the garlic. Okay. Now, we're gonna light the fire. I've got my sterno right here. And there goes all the flames. Okay, and to that, we're gonna add one cup of white wine. You want a dry white wine. I like Chardonnay. 
And please don't buy the $2.99 wine if you don't like the flavor because you're really gonna taste the alcohol in this. So get something you like. So in goes our wine. And we're also gonna add one tablespoon of fresh squeezed lemon juice. And now you're gonna let that sit until it just comes to a simmer. Okay, so now our wine and our lemon juice are simmering. I'm gonna to try to give you a look. I know this is not the best angle. This is just the best I can do. But there you go. We're steaming, we're simmering. And now you're gonna to start to add handfuls of your cornstarch coated cheese. You just wanna kinda of sprinkle it around, give it a couple good handfuls, and start to stir. Give that a good stir. You want all the cheese in there. And then give it another good handfuls. Two handfuls. Two handfuls are good. And immediately the cheese will start to melt. I just love the 70s so much. It was such a different time. And if you grew up in the 70s or were a child of the 70s and you saw your parents being all wacky and having fun and having these crazy parties, it's kind of like it was different as a kid, but now as an adult, you can kick back and look back and go, huh, I understand. And now it's like, well, if you miss it, or you want to relive it, or you want to experience it, have a 70s party. Make fondue. There's a couple of different kinds of fondues. There's chocolate fondue, there's fondue bourguignon, which is raw meat cooked in either hot oil, well, it's hot oil, or there's another version where you can cook the meat in a hot broth. We're not covering those today, but sometimes I have fondue parties. Start with the cheese fondue, and then we do a meat fondue, and if there's any room at all, I'll do a chocolate fondue. So now, here you go. This is what it's looking like. Yes, it's very wet and it's clumpy. So this is where you wanna stir for about a good three to four minutes and it'll kind of get all incorporated and look like the fondue you know. I'm not gonna make you sit here for three to four minutes, so I'll be back when it looks like fondue. Okay, we're back. I've been stirring for about four or five minutes, nonstop, and finally, take a look at that. All the cheese and wine have incorporated and you have fondue. You're not quite done yet. You need two little additions to make it authentic fondue. The first one is a tablespoon of Kirsch or Kirschwasser. It looks like that. And it's really just like a cherry brandy. It usually comes in tiny bottles because you use such a little bit at each time, mainly for cheese fondue. And you, it'll last you forever. And it's a very, very important flavor in your cheese fondue. So, you're gonna add one tablespoon of Kirsch, and you're gonna add one half teaspoon of dry mustard. And you wanna just kind of mix all that around. There is one more traditional addition, and that is a tiny pinch of nutmeg. And when I say tiny, I mean tiny because nutmeg can overpower this fondue like that. Gotta be honest with you, the only place I like nutmeg is in eggnog. So I'm leaving it out, it's my preference. But if you wanna see if you like it, just take a little fondue out, put a speck of nutmeg in, mix it around, taste it. If you like it, put literally a, like less than an eighth of a teaspoon in, like a pinch. Anyway, this is your classic cheese fondue. Look at that, it's perfect, it's gorgeous, and it's so good and it's so 1970s. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut down the flame a little bit and we're gonna talk about the dippers. Remove that out of the way. Very, very classic, classic dippers. Here we go. Cubed French bread, but you can really use any bread you want. Actually, what I've got here is half French bread and half ciabatta. Change it up a little bit. And then we have red potatoes. How did I make them? Just cube them up. Cool them off, serve them at room temperature. They're fabulous. And last, we have cornichons and cocktail onions. Cornichons are tiny pickles, but don't get them confused with the sweet kind. They're very vinegary. Same with the cocktail onions. So that vinegar really cuts the fat in the Swiss cheese fondue. It's fabulous. So what is your favorite fondue? I don't know what I like. I, I'm a big sucker for classic, but there's just so many flavors out there. 
Let me know in the comments what your favorite fondue is and let me know in the comments if you have a fondue party. Try it, you'll love it. So now we have our fondue and all that's left is to skewer some bread. Oh, we should take our spoon out. Oh. And then when you serve it, you keep your flame on low and it'll be perfect. There we go, you just twist around. I'm not gonna eat it because I'm gonna burn my mouth. But here is fondue, it is so good. You gotta try it. So if you've had fun again, please subscribe, like the video, comment and share with your friends, and tell me what your favorite fondue is, and tell me if you had a party. I would love to hear of it. I am on a mission to bring back the 70s because they were just such a crazy, wonderful time. So thank you so much for joining me, and as always, history has never tasted so good.